Hi everyone! There's a reason why I'm here today and it is because I want to talk about how to get a job in England. I think on Instagram especially is one of the questions that I get asked the most and it is in fact when I get to England how do I find a job? Pfft, too much hair. And I thought it would probably be easier if I just made a video that would summarize quite briefly all the ways that you can get a job here in England. First thing first, do not expect not to work hard because I'm talking about England but Truly, my only experience is London. And one thing I learned so far from being here has been that you definitely do need to work hard. You need to be able to put a lot of effort into what you do. And especially what you're gonna be doing is more likely than not, not gonna be an easy job or the job of your dreams. I get a lot of people that ask me how they can become really famous actress or actors or get straight into the film industry or be incredible photographers or, you know, do all of those sort of artsy jobs that you think you can just move here and do. From my personal experience and my belief it doesn't work like that or at least that has not been my experience and I can't speak from anything else but my personal experience so this is all my personal opinion and my personal experience. To find a job here in England you just need to go online, find a template for the European curriculum vitae and fill it up. One really important thing that you need to be doing is showing that you're hard work, but every single type of experience you might have had, if you just came out of school, maybe some extracurricular activity that you've done, or um, some voluntary work that you've done, some summer work, summer job, or that sort of thing, anything that might help you showing that you are willing to work. Also, your school grades would be very important and especially your knowledge of English would make a difference. So if you have any certification or any exam that you've done or something that proves that you know English very well, that's probably very helpful. If you give a job that are in hospitality, they normally don't ask for incredible requirements. They only know that they want someone that's willing to work hard really long hours and that it can rely on especially because I'm talking for my fellow Italians here we have the reputation here in England to be lazy and to not turn out on time and to make excuses for not come to work so since you have to go against this stereotype show that you're committed that you like what you're doing and that you're willing and you know, willing to learn, willing to do, willing to put effort into what you're doing. Especially, I think one thing that is going to make you enjoy your job a bit more is trying to put some passion into what you're doing, even though you don't like it. Because even if you're working in a restaurant, and you know, working in a restaurant might not be the job of your dreams, still, being kind to clients, being polite to clients, and normally even receiving that politeness back, creating a bond between you and the client, or at least that was my experience in the tiny restaurant I worked for for two years. It's nice. It's nice to learn which wine goes with what. It's nice to see dogs come in a restaurant. It's nice to be proud of what you're doing and, you know, still the manager, if he sees that you're doing a good job, he's gonna compliment you. It can be rewarding, even though it's not the job of your dreams. This already derailed a lot from the idea of getting a job in London. I think just don't go to work with the idea that it's horrible, that it's gonna suck, that you hate it, that you hate everyone, that you hate your clients, that you hate what you have to do, you can't wait to go home. I mean, it's fair that you think that, honestly, like I thought that most of the time. But try and just focus on what you're doing, because the more you focus on what you're doing and the least you focus on the time passing by, trust me, time is gonna go so much quicker and at the end of the day, it would just have gone because the most important thing is keeping yourself busy. As long as you're busy, time goes by. It's when you have nothing to do that's dreadful. Normally, if you go there, go yourself in person with your CV, ask to talk to a manager and ask if they're looking for any position that might be suitable for what you're looking for in hospitality, whether it's in a cafe, in a restaurant, um, in a pub, in a bar, uh, maybe you've got qualifications for doing that sort of thing. Anything that might be suitable for the job that you're applying for, put down. Also, if you're applying for jobs for being like carers and nannies and that sort of stuff, still, make sure that you put everything concerning that sort of like area of expertise in your CV. Make sure that your description and your sort of like cover letter is grammatically correct. And this is another thing. Normally, when you apply for jobs that are necess not necessarily hospitality, but some hospitality jobs, especially if you're applying online, will require that. Normally, if you go face to face, people are fine with your CV and they'll call you back for like a trial shift or something. And if you are not a complete dumb best idiot, they will hire you. But they, they ask you for a CV and a cover letter. A cover letter is a letter where you describe why you're suitable for the job and what experience you've had before. So like, why would you recommend yourself for that sort of thing? It's like your presentation letter in a way. And some jobs require it, especially office jobs and especially like jobs that are not as accessible as hospitality work. In terms of hospitality work, you can also work with agencies. Agencies are basically 
agencies like Ari Hospitality, Off to the Work, uh, there was one that was like called like Lydia or something like that. There are loads scattered all around London. They just sort of like call you when they need you. You register with them, you do a training with them, which includes like how to order plates, how to put down the forks and cutlery and all that sort of stuff, uh, which wine glass you need to use and all of that sort of things and how to get dressed and how to address clients and blah, blah, blah. And then they just send you over to events. They message you and they tell you, there's this event available. This is the pay. Are you available? And if you are, you text them back and they will phone you and they will put you down for the shift and you will receive the details for the shift that you're going to be doing. I worked in places like Wembley and Neo2 and uh, Royal Asco. I worked at so many awards, so many awards that literally I didn't even know. I should have won something. You worked at gigs, concerts, uh, anything really, conferences, uh, meetings, anything. They're normally quite good because if you are especially studying uh, or if you need a flexible job, you can refuse a job or you can decide when you want to be working. And you also can sort of like climb the ladder and become a manager and a, you know, a team leader. You can become a team leader and you can get more money and that sort of stuff. And at the end of the day, to be completely honest, it wasn't as bad. Like once you get to know the people that you work with and you end up working always in the same places and you get to know what you're doing, um, it's not as bad. Obviously it might not be the drama, it obviously it might not be the job of the dream, but as I said again, when you first move to a new country, you can't expect everything to go right and to have the perfect job in the perfect place right away. You might. You might, good luck. I mean, it could happen, 100%, but don't expect it. Obviously, if you do have a degree, if you have a qualification or something, uh, maybe I'd say, since you've just moved, maybe look for a hospitality job or something that can keep you busy and give you money and let you know, pay your bills in the meantime, and you can get a house and everything in the meantime because you've got someone guaranteeing for you and that's paying you. But you can still apply with your CV for something that's more suitable to what you'd be studying. So you know, maybe you've got a degree in marketing, maybe you've got a degree in finance or um, geography, literature, uh, uh, God knows. Whenever you're getting interviewed, show yourself to be ready, quick, clever, uh, intuitive, and just do that you want to work, that you're willing to do it, and you're a positive person to have around because. At the end of the day, you're gonna get hired because yes, you're good, but also you've got a nice personality because nobody wants to work with an asshole. So try not to be an asshole, try not to be a pain. If you're worried about the language, I know, and I filmed the documentary with um, La Repubblica about this. You can move to London and know next to nothing about English, just a slight base of it. And if you're willing to work hard enough and learn and maybe even do a course or whatever, you honestly can make it because English is everywhere we go. So you learn it by leaving it, you learn it by making mistakes, you learn it by trial by error, really. A guy that I interviewed came to London and wanted to be a hairdresser, had no clue whatsoever how to speak English and the first haircut he gave was completely wrong but he managed to fix it. And he's been here for a few months now and he knows his job and he can talk to his clients and he's not bad at English at all because I talked to him and he talked to other people as well in English and he's not too bad. So you can do it. It's just a matter of like how, what you do with yourself. Don't expect it to come to you, don't expect it to be easy because the first months in a city like London um, moving away from home, from your comfort zone and from your comforts and what you're used to in your routine, it's not easy but in the long run, if it is what you want to do, it's worth it. And worst case scenario, if it doesn't work for you, you can always go home because no decision is final. You're not wasting your life if you want to do a year in London or if you want to do a few months here and experience something new, it's going to make you grow, it's going to make you feel different, you're going to have experienced something completely new. So why not? Obviously, to get a job, you will have to then get your national insurance number. Therefore, you're going to have to call uh, the specific office. I think they're called like job office or something like that. I'll put this the link in the description down below. Um, but you're going to get an appointment. You're going to get assessed. You're going to have to bring your documents, so like passport, ID, or whatever, and your bills and what where you've been staying, what you've been doing, blah blah. They will ask you a few questions, and then eventually they give you your national insurance number, which is basically sort of like um. Codice Fiscale, like an ID number that you have to pay taxes and all that sort of stuff as well, that identifies you and it's fundamental. A lot of uh, people will ask for it if you have it in your interview. If you don't have it yet, because you might not have it yet, uh, just say that you've got an appointment and you're booking an appointment to get it as soon as possible and they'll wait for you to get it and whatever. Most of the time they'll pay the taxes for you so it's not going to be that much of an issue and welcome to the adult life of people that are working. I think I've summarised most of the things that were needed. Hope this was useful to you. Let me know if you have any other question. I'll try and reply as, as quick as I can. And I will say once again, me and Jared are coming to Florence at 1pm on April 22nd 
Sunday, me and him are going to have a meetup outside uh, the station of Santa Maria Novella at one. If people are inside, they can come outside. We're gonna try and see if we can see people inside the McDonald's because a lot of people are gonna be meeting up there. Come outside if that's the case. And we're gonna go up and, you know, eat some ice cream, have a walk, sit down in the park, just enjoy the sun, do something like that. And it's gonna be Sunday 22nd of April at 1pm in front of the station. Um, I will see you there. We are so excited. We're leaving tomorrow. It's so cool. I can't wait. We're gonna be road tripping Italy and I can't wait to be around with Jared and just like do all that sort of stuff. Well, I hope this video was useful to you and I will see you in my next one. Booyah!